day, a game and a half back, where they had Mark Pryor go on Wednesday. And Dusty Baker was confident they could win despite losing on Tuesday. He said, it's one game and we'll come back and win the series. It's the same way we started last time, isn't it? Dusty's got a point. They took three of four at Wrigley last week after losing the opener to the Astros. Pryor in control in the first. Linda, let's play count the pitches. Okay. Pryor facing Craig Biggio. That's one, two, two three. three. Biggio's out of there. How about Lance Berkman? One, two, three, four. Berkman's down. It's two outs. Jeff Bagwell, one, two, three, four. Pryor strikes out the side on 11 pitches. This is fun. I wish my air conditioner was that efficient. Uh -huh. Bottom four, two nothing Cubs. Pryor facing Bagwell again. One. Got him again. Oh, did we stop counting? We stopped counting. Oh, sorry. Three Ks on the night for Bagwell. Next batter, Jeff Kent, he's going too. Hey, Pryor's got a no-hitter going. Top six, three nothing comes. Randall Simon up, and he hit that ball like it was dressed in a sausage suit. Three run shot for Simon. His first homer is a Cub. Six nothing Chicago. Bottom six. Pryor still has a no-hitter. Okay, well now he doesn't. Adam Everett breaking it up. Double over Tom Goodwin's head. No hitter. Over after five innings. Still in the six. Berkman up. Two outs. Berkman swinging, but to no avail. Seven shutout innings for Pryor. Struck out nine, and the Cubs win it six zip. Pirates and Cardinals, Jeff D'Amico, a career 103 hitter. He is a pitcher, you know. Top of the third, no score. Jeff D'Amico gone. His second career homer in 137 at bats. That one off of Garrett Stevenson. Top of the fourth, one on nobody out. Rob McCobiak off of Stevenson. McCobiak second of this year, 3 0 Pirates. Let's move on to the fifth. Okay. Jason Kendall in the box against Stevenson, and that's gone. Number five for Kendall. It is four nothing Pirates. Oh, Brian Giles is so jealous. He wants attention to off of Stevenson, but Jim Edmonds thinks he's got a play on this, and we never doubt Jim Edmonds in center, do we? Off his glove, and it's a home run. Giles, the 16th homer, back-to-back -back Jacks. Take another look. Great effort by Edmonds, as always. Lands hard on the ground, but he would stay in the game. Pirates with four homers Wednesday. A year ago Wednesday, Pirates had five homers in St. Louis against these Cardinals. Could they make it five again one year later? Let's go back to Wednesday. I mean, we're talking exactly a year ago. Still in the fifth next batter, Reggie Sanders off of Jason Pearson. Number 28 for Sanders. The Pirates hit their fifth homer of the game, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back homers, all within five pitches. Now, in Tuesday's game, the Cards scored 10 in the eighth. So far Wednesday, the Pirates have scored six in the fifth. Bases loaded, Reggie Sanders again. I drive to left. What a topper this is going to be. The Pirates score their 10th run of the inning on Sanders' second homer of the inning. First time this year a player has hit two homers in an inning. First time two teams have scored 10 runs in an inning in the same series since 1933. Hey, good thing for St. Louis. Albert Pujols returns. Once again, Bonds coming off a dramatic 10th inning home run Tuesday. Snap San Francisco's losing streak. Gary Sheffield hitting 391 during his career-high 23-game hit streak. Did I say 23? Yeah. Better make that 24. Rafael Fracal holding up at third. Sheffield in with a double as the streak goes on. Top four, one nothing. Braves, Javi Lopez running. Vinny Castilla strikes out. Eric Young dives for the throw and tags Lopez out. Nice play by the new giant acquired on Tuesday. Bottom four, still one nothing. Bonds facing Shane Reynolds, 6-5-3 DP with the shift. Bonds 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Bottom five, one nothing. Braves, Benito Santiago off Reynolds. And off the wall, Sheffield, whoops. But he gathers it, throws a strike to Rafael for a call, who throws a missile to Castilla at third to get Santiago. Nice arms by the Braves' defense. Bottom eight, one nothing. Braves, Santiago facing Reynolds. That is crunk. Looks like a home run. Santiago thinks he's got a home run. Shane Reynolds says, no, he doesn't have a home run. Santiago stopped at third. Felipe Alou wants to know what's going on. Well, let's take another look at it. Chipper Jones leaps for it. Ball bounces off the top of the wall, so no home run. Felipe would give it his best shot, but to no avail. Next batter, Andres Galarraga with one out. Pops it up. Mark DeRosa calls for it. Only problem is he slips and doesn't catch it. Sheffield picks it up, and he's coming home. Play at the plate. Safe. Braves can't believe it. Take another look at Henry Blanco. Gets the ball and tags Santiago before he reaches the base. It's Bobby Cox's turn to argue, but the Giants tied at one. Bottom nine, 
Still tied at one. Kevin Grabowski wants no part of Barrett. Base is loaded. Next batter, Edgardo Alfonso. He says, why you want to try to play me? Nephi Perez scores, and the Giants win it 2-1. Their 17th win in their final at bat. Their second in as many nights. Up on Boston for the wild card, bottom three. Ted Lilly facing Damian Jackson. Two on, two out. Jackson. That'll bring in Jason Baratek and Gabe Kapler. And we got a hard slide into second by Jackson. And Jackson will be the guy leaving the game with a sprained finger. 4-1 Boston. Next batter, Johnny Damon. Looking to add to the onslaught. Damon, three for five with that RBI. Jackson scores. It's 5-1 Boston. Top of the fourth. Here comes Oakland. Miguel Tejada leading off. No doubt. His 18th home run of the year. He went two for five with two runs scored. It's 5-2 now. Bottom four. Doug Mirabelli up. Two on, two out. Sox now up 6-2. A's pitcher. Mike New fakes the throw to third, turns and throws to first and picks off Kapler to the end of the inning. Bottom five, now 6-4. Bill Miller up, men on second and third. New kicks it off his foot, throws home to catch Mirabelli in a rundown. Scott Hatterberg, what about this play? This is a skate save. This, he, he's got some Canadian in him right here. Look at that. that that's great. We, they had a couple opportunities, and our pitcher just shut him down. Skate save and a beauty. Top of the A still 6-4. Red Sox two on. Nobody out. And Rubio Durazo against his former Arizona teammate BK Kim. Down the line, Eric Chavez would score from third. 6-5 now Red Sox lead. Remember on Tuesday, their bullpen blew one. Scott Hatterberg. Tejada would score. We have a tie game. So just like Tuesday, Wednesday, the Red Sox pen blew another one. Later in the eighth, Mark Ellis up. Runners on first and third. Bill Miller. Fields it. His throw home gets away from Mirabelli. Durazo scores. Bottom eight. Up by two is Oakland. Two on, two out for Damon Hatterberg. Sweet. Maka, about two seconds before that, put me right on the line, and I don't think the dust had even settled, and I was diving out for it. Yeah, Johnny Damon still in shock. The A's win their fourth straight. The Red Sox stranded 17 runners. They're now down two for the wild card. Yanks with a chance to open up a seven and a half game lead in the East with a win over the Royals who have their own concerns. Bottom five, Jimmy Gobble concerned with Nick Johnson. That's gone, but watch, the ball bounces, hits a fan on the head. The fan loses his hat, 7-2 Yankees and Johnson's ninth home run. Mariano Rivera warming up, Yanks still believe in him. I've never really seen him get hit really hard. I mean, we've made a few mistakes and a few of the saves that he's blown, but uh, uh, he's still unbelievable. I think, you know, when push comes to shove, he'll be there. Yanks up 8-4, one out. Rivera facing Mike Sweeney with runners at the corners. No tapper. Aaron boots his glove. I don't need no stinking glove. Tries to barehand it, but he can't make the play. Aaron Giles scores. It's now 8-5. Next batter, Carlos Beltran. Past Alfonso Soriano. Angel Barro coming around. It's now 8-6, and Mo's having issues again. Next batter, Raul Ibanez. In to right, Mike Sweeney held up at third. Carlos Beltran coming around second. Whoops. Went a little too far. Juan Rivera throws the second. Derek Zeta tags Beltran out. Take another look. Third base coach John Miserat holding Sweeney right away, but Beltran has his head down, assuming Sweeney will score, and Beltran is easy meet. Would have been the tying run in scoring position, but now they're two away. Next batter, Joe Randa. Up the middle. Rivera can't believe he gets through. Sweeney coming around to score. 8-7. Tying run at third. Next batter, Desi Relliford. Rivera gets him swinging ball game. Yanks win at 8-7. They sweep the three-game series, 27 save for Mo. Yanks have won seven in a row. So with KC losing, the White Sox could move into a tie with the first place Royals with a win over the Angels. John Lackey facing Roberto Alomar. This is a lost start. The bunt. Nobody's there to cover. Alomar in with a single. Sitting 280. Bottom of the second. Lackey facing Alomar again. Again, the bunt. His second bunt single of the game. Jerry Manuel on Alomar's bunting. He had a terrible angle. I think now that he's comfortable, um, drops a bunt down. And I, I just really think for him that sets up the rest of his, uh, his game. All he needed was confidence. Esteban Loiza facing Jeff Devannon with a man on third. Loiza all over that. Nine Ks in six innings. Ask Garrett Anderson about that. Strike out. Next batter, Tim Salmon. Can't catch up with the nasty stuff by Loiza. Allowed three runs, ten hits. Trying to win his 16th. Bottom three, Lackey facing Maglio Ordonez. Ordonez. He's been lifting his 23rd home run of the year. The White Sox are up three to one. Bottom four, guess who's up again? Robbie Alomar. Alomar. Off the foot of Lackey, and Alomar is in with a single. His third infield hit of the game. Bottom six, Greg Jones facing Alomar. 
And this is a shot to third. Scott Spezio, a great play, but his throw not in time. So Alomar's fourth infield hit of the game. Last player to do that, Christian Guzman in June of 2001. Loiza walking to Van and Manuel pulls Loiza and puts Damaso Marte into pitch looking for his 10th save. Marte facing Scott Spezio, two out, two on, gets the job done. And we have a tie on top of the central. Twins started the night a game and a half out of first in the Central and in Cleveland. Top seven game tied at three. Christian Guzman versus Brian Anderson with two on. Popped up to John McDonald. McDonald makes the grab, but he's a little late coming home. Torrey Hunter tags, goes home, and slides in as Tim Laker makes the catch. Hunter calls safe by Scott Nelson. Laker disagrees and disagrees very vehemently. We take another look. Nelson says he's safe. He's all over it, but Laker doesn't agree, gets ejected, and says, take that! Twins win it 4-3, so the race gets even tighter. So the White Sox are back tied for first place, but this race could change day by day. Big series starts Thursday when the Royals play at Minnesota. Race fills have been clinging to that half-game lead on Florida. Fills in Milwaukee Wednesday. Jim Tomei, six home runs, 12 RBI in his last six games. Rough stretch for the Phillies, 27 games in 27 days. Wednesday was day two. Brady Clark facing Randy Wolf. Three-run shot, Clark's third of the season, and the Brewers out to a 5-0 lead. Bottom of the fifth, Richie Sexton facing Wolf, and he says, you know, I'd like some of that. Two-run shot for Sexton, his 34th, and it's 7-0 Brewers. Meanwhile, Matt Kinney in charge. Jim Tome just looking. Placido Polanco swinging, but it doesn't matter. Bobby Abreu, he's gone too. Brewers win it 10-1. Kenny finished with eight Ks and eight innings pitch, so not really a close shave, but he did get some shaving cream. So good, the Marlins leapfrog the Phils into the wild card lead. Mark Redman to Ronnie Belliard. Belliard gets his bat on it to third. Off of the glove of Mike Lowell to Alex Gonzalez. The throw to first, that's an out. What a play, bottom two, Corey Vance now facing Redman Vance. Back at Redman, who deflects it behind his back. The first baseman, Derek Lee, for the out. Top of the fourth, one on, one out for Pudge. Rodriguez in the hole. Belliard tracks it down. The flip behind his back to one. Arebe, the 4-6-3 double play. We need another look, just in case he stepped away for another bite of Coco Krispies. Perfect flip to make the play. Rockies would win 9-3. So Florida stays a half game behind the Phils in the NL wild card race. Reds in Arizona, Randy Johnson on the mound for the D-backs against the Reds. You know, Johnson is making his seventh start since coming back from the DL. His number's not that great. Just two and three, allowing seven homers in just six starts. Hasn't had a 10K game in six starts. Longest drought since 1997 for the unit. Top of the second, scoreless, Ruben Mateo, Kelly Stinnett on base. Mateo, Gonzalez misses it. But here comes the throw home by Gonzalez, and Stinnett trips rounding third, and he's tagged out. Take another look. What did Stinnett trip over? I think it was the third baseline. Let's, let's take another look. Right near the third baseline, he tripped over. Reds will go on to score. Make it 1-0. Top of the third, Ryan Friel just called up Wednesday. Oh, he'll always remember his first time. Only the fifth player to hit their first career homer off of Johnson. Bottom nine, two the Reds. Ryan Wagner to Raul Mondesi. Struck out Mondesi. Throws his bat on the field. Oh, he's gone for that. Same inning. Shea Hillenbrand called out on strikes. Third out of the inning. Game over. Reds shutting out the D-backs. Two to nothing. It's L.A. now for the Expos and Dodgers. Vlad Guerrero, 224 home runs as an Expo, facing Eric Gagne in the top of the ninth. Strike one swing. And next pitch, strike two, 99 miles per hour, called on the outside corner. Next pitch, Vlad over the wall, number 16 for Guerrero on the season. The replay shows Guerrero does a Sammy Sosa-like hop. Runner on third in the bottom of the ninth. Rocky Biddle facing Ron Coomer. Chops it toward third. Jamie Carroll. Throws it to first. Alex Cora able to score on the play for the game all tied up at one. Now bottom 10 2 on for Adrian Beltre. Facing Biddle. Three-run shot, and it's time to bounce. Dodgers win it 4-1 to one on Beltre's 15th home run of the season. His second career walk-off shot. Toronto. Mariners 16-3 in their last 19 games at Sky Dome. 5-2 Blue Jays, though, in the eighth. Josh Towers to Ichiro. Vernon Wells, look at you. That yoga is really paying off. <laughs> Wells also hit his 30th homer in this game. Towers facing Mike Cameron. Towers gets the complete game effort, his first since June of 2001. And the Blue Jays shutting down Seattle 5-2. Linda, this is not the Twilight Zone. You are now entering the Yes. Tiger zone, where the line between bad and worst 
gets blurred. Oh, I see. Tigers, a team that sit at the bottom of the majors. They're 62 games below 500, 31 and 93, 37 games left to, left to play, so they could surpass these 62 Mets with 120 losses. That's the most in Major League history. Wednesday night, bottom third, bases loaded. Ari Dickey pitching to Kevin Witt. Tigers with a chance. When you know it. Witt swinging on the 2-2 pitch. That would end the inning. Top eight, Rangers up 4-0, A-Rod. Doing what he does. His 36th of the year, and the Rangers lead 6-0, and they win by that same score. And like most of the people in Detroit, you are now exiting the Tiger Zone. I thought they were just looking for the uh, Lions in the football season. <laughs> we got that coming up. Okay. Tigers lose, but maintain their slim lead on the 62 Mets, who are a game worse through 125 games. Speaking of the Mets, we go to a Hall of Famer who's